What's going on guys? Gabe with Buffy Dork and this is the HP Omen 15 2020. This particular model sports an AMD Ryzen 7 based on the Zen 2 architecture, but you can also get this flavored with an Intel chip, preferably an Intel Core i7 10750H, and you have NVIDIA graphics card options ranging from a GTX 1650 Ti, which I feel is a little out of place but you can scale this all the way up to an RTX 2070. And for those looking for a budget gaming device starting below $1,000, I suggest you look at customizing this PC with an AMD Ryzen 5 4600 each and a 1650 Ti with eight gigs of RAM. When it comes to gaming, eight gigs of RAM tends to be the sweet spot and we only go higher than that when we are multitasking. However, if you're buying this device to game and stream, 16 gigs of RAM is the absolute minimum. The AMD Ryzen 7 4800H in this laptop features a core 16 threads, a 2.9 gigahertz base clock, and a 4.3 gigahertz max boost clock with a 45 watt TDP and a max operating temperature of 105 degrees Celsius. And this will undoubtedly be the CPU of choice for most gamers and content creators Outperforming Intel Core i7 10758H or 10750H, yeah, 10750H in almost every benchmark out there. Seeing AMD gaining traction in the laptop segment is refreshing, but hardly unexpected since AMD chips have outsold Intel chips in the desktop and the enthusiast build segment since at least 2018 and back in the early 2000s, actually circa late 90s. AMD was the way to go, and I think I just shared with you my age. I'm just an old ass son of a. Should we add a bleed? Maybe. But I didn't say it, so we could keep this rated PG. In fact, the custom rig behind me is home to a Ryzen 3950X, and it's absolutely amazing. Even though that build did take us a few hours. In fact, Applejack's. Uh, didn't get home till about one in the morning. He was teary eyed. He had red veins coming out his eyes. He's like, Gabe, would you hurry up? But today we are going to light up the HP Omen. We're gonna put this bad boy on fire by stressing both the CPU and the video card at the same time. This hardly represents real world usage since gaming just taxes the GPU while video editing beats on the CPU. But for 99% of us, we're never going to do both at the same time. So we're going to see if we end up with a mound of molten aluminum and plastic. And you better hope that doesn't happen because I'm giving this device away. If you haven't seen my unboxing video, head on over to that video after this video and leave a funny comment. The rules to apply the funniest comment gets this device, or maybe I'm just keeping it and buying a new one. But uh, yeah, <laughs> make sure you guys check out that video. Now, that's not what I'm hoping for. I don't want it to turn into molten plastic and aluminum, but hey, we're doing it for science. This AMD flavored omen with one terabyte of NVMe M.2 storage, 16 gigs of RAM, clocked at 3200 megahertz, upgradable up to 32 gigs. And we say 32 gigs because that is the limitation of the 4800H. So keep that in mind. If you're throwing in 64 gigs, you're just, you're wasting your money, you're wasting your time. Also, we got an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti pushing the frames. And this display has a 144 hertz refresh rate, customizable up to 300 hertz. I just don't see the point of that configuration since the 1660 Ti, the 2060, or even the 2070 simply don't have the grunt to push 300 frames per second. And that's unless you're playing on some Atari 2600 emulator. Go ahead and play Pong by yourself. It's gonna get really lonely out there. Content creators can also opt for the 4K AMOLED. I say content creators because gaming in 4K at 60 Hertz just doesn't make sense. Creators want detail, gamers want FPS. It's just two opposite ends of the spectrum. So just keep that in consideration. Don't go ahead and buy a 4K display just to say you have a 4K display. 
make sure if you're getting a 4K display, you're actually using those 4Ks. Does that even make sense using those 4Ks? Make sure you're using that damn resolution. I mean, for photographers and video content creators, you know, you don't want to see no jaggies in your lines, right? So if you're anal about that, go ahead, get a 4K display. Speaking of display, this is not only fast and bright with 300 nits of brightness, according to our own Spider-X Elite calibration tool, this display has 98% sRGB coverage, which is absolutely respectable for gamers, photographers, and video creators. I mean, 98% compared to 100% sRGB coverage is so microscopically granular. It's not even worth a deep dive. I mean, I'm not even sure if Applejacks can tell the difference in size, Never mind. So let's take a look at the chassis. It's a combination of aluminum and plastic. Most notably is the fin that runs the full length of the back. Underneath, you're going to find large perforations that help the two fans sucking gobs of air. I'm serious, this laptop goes full on Golden Corral. Here you have the speaker grills in the corners. And uh, in my unboxing video, there was a slight gap because on top on the keyboard deck, I actually called these here. Now these are exhaust grills, but I called these speaker grills. Again, just in unboxing systems like the Dell XPS, it was just an assumption. And I told you guys I suck at unboxings, but considering all things. We have an exhaust vent here. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but HP has really come a long way when it comes to thermals. And yeah, this thing just looks like something NASA would build. No one wants a toaster oven for a laptop or charred knees for that matter. And in previous generations, HP stood for heat pipe and not high performance, but Hewlett Packard has finally gotten it together, including the industry's first implemented IR thermal pile sensor within a gaming laptop to optimize thermal efficiencies. And this allows for fan noise control and higher performance from the CPU and the graphics card. And what this means is that the 1660 Ti could actually perform just as well as a 2060 because the cooling solution allows for the components to really flex, really breathe. There isn't really much thermal throttling that's happening in this PC. And we're gonna show you guys that in a second. Okay, so what is this here? Well, we have the FLIR-1 thermal imaging camera to get a thermal image of where all this heat's going. And more on that in a second. You don't wanna miss this because this thing has Starship Enterprise thrusters in the back, it's just wow. Up top, we have the new Omen Diamond logo in a blue green gradient that screams, press me, <laughs> press me. But when you do, you get a lot of flex. I mean, Mr. Olympia kind of flex, and no, not really, but it is kind of disappointing. Now, the hinges are sturdy, and not overly aggressive. I mean, we're opening a laptop lid, not a bank vault, and there is a gentle wobble of the screen, and it's not horrific, but it's noticeable, and for some who are nitpickers, uh, AKA petty, could be annoying. But listen, it's a lid. And speaking of hinge, you do have 180 degrees of articulation, of course, you can't have 360 degrees of articulation, otherwise you would have to call this an HP Envy X360 or an HP Spectre X360. Hey, whatever, it's 180. It stays in its own class. No 360 here, deal with it. It's not a game breaker. Moving on over to the IOs. On the left side, you have your power input, you have your ethernet port, you have your USB 3.1, it's not a 3.2. That's fine. You have an HDMI out and you have your headphone jack. And of course we have a full size SD card reader. I need to mention that the SD card reader is not the fastest, but again, it's almost a must if you're into video creation, that type of thing, right? Photographers wanna go ahead and save their, yeah, I mean, 
do we have a camera? All the cameras take full size SDs, guys. So, you know, like you need it, all right? So on the right hand side, we have two USBs. We have the air vent. We have a mini display port and we have a type C port. This laptop isn't light. It weighs 5.4 pounds. Ooh, yeah, but it is thinner and shorter than last year's HP Omen 15. I believe by percentages of 11% thinner and 9% shorter. Don't quote me on that. I'm really, this is all coming off the top of my head. You know, maybe I do have a teleprompter I'm reading off of, you know, nobody knows and we'll keep it that way. When we open her up, she's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We see upgradable RAM up to 32 gigabytes. We see uh, in the corners here, we have the heat sinks for the M.2 NVMe storage. We have one terabyte already here on this end. We could add additional storage on the other side here, and you could actually configure this to RAID 0, which is a plus, a definite plus. And then we have the infamous speakers. I gapped on these in the last video. And um, <laughs> we look at here and, and, and you can see everything is just so clean. We have a 70 watt hour battery, but the stars here are the 25% larger fans coupled with the 16% larger exhaust grill or a 62% higher airflow. And I don't know what we're comparing this to. HP says compared to last year's generations and I don't have last year's generation with me, so I can't really uh, validate that statement. But we do know with uh, our thermal imaging, this thing is pushing air. It is pushing a lot of air. We're gonna show you guys that in a second. I was just as curious about its benchmarks as I was about its heat dissipation, thermoacoustics and heat signature. So we opened up HP Command Center and entered performance mode, and then went 2020 on this thing. You know, 2020 just deserves to be like its own hashtag with such like a negative connotation, right? So how's your day going? My day is going 2020. People automatically know it's, it's, it's horrible. It's shit, right? So yeah, we're going 2020 on this. We're about to just wreck all hell on this thing. And we threw a few benchmarks at this device. 3D Mark, Cinebench, Stress the GPU running gear five in ultra settings. This score, a 6089 on the Time Spy benchmark. And I'm not at all surprised. Single and multi-core scores in Cinebench R20 showed just how far AMD has come with their seven nanometer process, resulting in 15% IPC gains compared to their previous 12 nanometer microarchitecture. Hosting scores, multi-core 4,532 and 483 single core. Ask Intel to do that for you. And the Gears benchmark posted a 75.8 FPS in ultra settings. And of course you can go higher as you scale it. We go down to normal settings, high settings, but ultra settings. We're still getting over 60 FPS on Gears 5. And of course we can run Crisis on this, but I was just afraid that if we ran Crisis 3 on here that I would not be able to give this system away, but maybe I should. And actually, that's what we're gonna do. When we do our HP Omen 15 versus the Asus ROG G14, we're gonna run Crisis on it. Oof, it's gonna get hot in here. Speaking of getting hot in here, guys, check this out, right? So over the weekend, my AC actually went, and so my unit outside was making a funny noise. So we had a contractor come in, check everything out, and there happened to be a frog cut in half, hanging out on one of the blades. So I have to make a plea to Miss Piggy. Don't do that to Kermie. Like, we don't have to get that serious. So on to the furnace test. To accomplish this, we use online CPU benchmarking tool, Silverbench, and run Furmark at the same time. <laughs> Woo! Time to get cooking. Okay guys, so how are we gonna run this test? Well, we have the Fleur 1 thermal imaging camera. As you guys could see, uh, 
You're getting a base mark there. My beautiful mug, I'm trying to get in that camera. I know I'm hot, I know I'm hot. Anyways, going back to the laptop here. As you guys can see, we have Furmark, and Furmark is going to stress the GPU. And we have the silver bench on the other side, and that's going to stress the CPU almost in the same way that Cinebench does. And so we're gonna run that at the same time. Now, keep in mind, in real world situations, you're not going to stress the CPU or the GPU at the same time. If you're video editing, you're stressing the CPU. If you are uh, gaming, you're stressing the GPU. Also, we have the resource monitor here to see if we get any evidence of thermal throttling. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started. As you guys can see, we have this set to performance and we have cooling set to auto. And we're gonna see if we can get this thing ramped up, see how loud it gets actually. In fact, we gotta bring out the tools here. Yes. We're gonna get a temperature read. We're gonna get the acoustics and we're gonna get the thermal image profile. So you guys can see we have CPU utilization at 100%. We also see the temperatures. Yeah, you guys already hear it. 62, we're getting 62. Now let's go ahead and get a thermal read on here. So you guys can see here, we're at 86 degrees on deck. The vents here, just a little bit hotter, not too hot. On the back here, we are reading 90, 94 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we get the exhaust back here, or to the side here, and we're seeing about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. But this thing is pushing air, and I wanna show you guys, we're gonna end up cutting to this camera at this point, but I wanna show you guys what the heat signature looks like. So let's start the camera. And uh, as you guys could see with the crosshair, the crosshair is telling you that on the keyboard, we're getting about 36 degrees Celsius. We move over to the vents here. We're about 40 degrees, 44 at the hottest point degrees Celsius. Then we move on to the back and check out these thrusters. I told you guys this would be like something out of Star Trek. We got the thrusters pushing out heat upwards of 42 degrees Celsius on both sides. You guys see that? that that's wow, that's amazing. And then we have the exhaust vent on the side there. We're gonna see if we get a reading on that as well. And yeah. We're getting about 40 degrees Celsius on that as well. But you guys, this is insane being able to see the whole entire image of where things are getting hot. And we haven't even gone underneath. We're gonna go ahead and flip this. We could see underneath, not that bad, not as bad as I expected we have as high as 50 degrees, 50 degrees Celsius. So Applejack just confirmed that that translates to about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, you don't want that on your knees, guys. So if you're really gonna be pushing this device, which I assume you won't, right now we're showing 91 degrees Celsius on the CPU, 62 degrees Celsius on the GPU, and we're at uh, the end of the test for the silver bench. So utilization dropped down significantly. But while what I'm looking at here is to see if there was any type of thermal throttling, and there wasn't. I didn't notice any thermal throttling looking at this whole, look, wow. Well done, HP, well done. This system kicks ass. This is Gabe with Review Dork. Make sure you comment down below. Make sure you go to the unboxing video. Make sure you leave a funny comment down there as well. We're going to give this system away after we compare it to the ASOS ROG G14. Plus we're gonna throw in 
some additional storage. I'm not sure if we're gonna get one terabyte or two terabytes of additional storage. Maybe that just depends on how funny or how much I really liked the winning comment. So look at guys, it's not costing you anything. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. This is Gabe, I'm signing out, peace.